Hey everyone, it's Justin Anderson and today I'd like to go through an in-depth tutorial on how I edit one of my photos. Uh, the photo I'm going to show you today was taken March 13th, 2021 uh, around midnight in Brandon, Manitoba. Uh, it's, the photo itself ha showcases Steve. Uh, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Steve, I highly recommend checking out the podcast Behind the Chase with Dylan Kaniski and myself, Justin Anderson. There we'll go in depth about explaining exactly what Steve is as well as this exact night when we were chasing it. So be sure to check out the episode called Chasing Steve with Dylan Kaniski and Justin Anderson. Um, you'll also see a new podcast episode coming out here shortly with uh, Chris Ratzlaff. He is the one of the namers behind Steve as well as he was a big part in uh, discovering Steve itself within the Alberta Aurora Chasers. So. Uh, highly recommend checking out those episodes if you have any interest behind what exactly you're seeing in today's photo. Now a little bit of a uh, backstory behind this technique is it's called stacking. Uh, the reason for that is are you going to take multiple photos throughout the night where your camera didn't move and you're going to stack them over top of each other to remove noise. Uh, I'm going to show you on the computer, I'll run through a full photo and show you exactly how it's done. But uh, stacking is widely used among astrophotographers for bringing back detail in the stars. This method really can be used for bringing back detail in the stars if you don't have much detail. It isn't great for aurora unfortunately just because the aurora moves so fast. But it is fantastic for bringing back detail in those buildings or your foreground. Um, if you have old photos that you haven't touched in a few years where the foreground is really dark, it was an old camera, you know, you have, but you have a bunch of photos in the exact same spot, this method is for you because you'll be able to bring back that detail and make it look like a brand new photo where you had a high-end camera. Uh, I've been going back through a lot of my old photos with a Canon T6i and I was able to bring back a lot of those detail even with a kit lens. So uh, I highly recommend checking out this tutorial and following along and trying it for yourself. If you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment below. I'll try to follow up with each one. And if you have any specific questions, I'll maybe even make a video and explain it a little more in depth. So without a doubt, be sure to follow along and uh, hope you get something out of this tutorial. Okay, now that we're on the computer here, what I'm gonna show you is how to take this photo specifically and turn it into this. So, as you can see here in the original photo, there's not a whole lot of detail in that building and that's because it was shot at 20 seconds f2.8 ISO 5000 on my Canon 60 Mark 1 I, I believe it was um, at 15 millimeters, so pretty wide. You can see that there's really a lot of noise in the foreground. There's just not a whole lot going on down there. If you wanted to bring back this photo itself, it'd be nearly impossible. Because it was such an exciting night, I didn't get any clear photo, like long exposure photos of this spot here. So I can't overlay it. I can't, I didn't have any photos of it lit up. I had nothing like that. So uh, I have to make use of what I have from that night. Uh, if you look here, if I go to develop it, you'll see that if I bring up those, those shadows, it's just so noisy and it looks like, looks awful. So. Um, this method works really well as long as your camera didn't move. Now if I shifted my camera, if my camera slightly moved at all, this method doesn't work. I can only take the photos I, the, where the camera did not move that night. So what I'm going to do is I believe I have about um, I have about 20 photos where the camera didn't move at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack all of those 20 photos over top of each other and then what it's going to do is it's going to remove the noise completely in the foreground. Uh, before that what I found is I like to bring up the exposure, bring up the shadows and bring up the whites and the blacks. The key here is I do not want any contrast. Um, if you have any contrast in there the blacks generally don't have a lot of noise just because it's pure black so if you bring up that contrast and bring down those blacks that black there, even though you're bringing up those shadows, that black is going to lose a lot of detail. So by bringing up those blacks quite a bit, you're going to see that there's going to be very little contrast and it's really going to help with your end result. You can bring that contrast back in your final image once you're in Photoshop, but for now, just leave that contrast away. So uh, I like to leave the contrast at zero. I like to bring up that exposure. The highlights I like to bring up just because that's going to be some ambient lighting. 
the shadows, I like to crank up at above 50. Uh, I like to make it really noisy. The more noise you have here and the more photos you have, the better it's going to look. The final image that is. Bring up those whites and basically just make it look how you want to. Now the horizon is a little crooked, don't worry about that right now. We'll get to that later on in Photoshop. This is just a simple edit of just the building. We don't care about the stars right now, all we care about is the building. So as you can see there's a lot of detail in there but it's incredibly noisy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack that. I'm going to sync all these settings across all these photos and make sure you have them all checked off. So sync all those settings across them. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply edit them in Photoshop. You can open them right as layers in Photoshop and we're going to wait and get all these loaded up. Now depending how fast your computer is this might take you a few minutes. This method is not the fastest that's for sure. So. Uh, it's best to give it some time, now go make a coffee and, and come back. So uh, we'll be back and uh, I'll continue on and show you what, well, what the next step is. Okay, now that all of our photos are back, are in Photoshop, open as layers, we have 20 photos completely. Um, just to show you here, that's all 20 frames in my layers tab. If you want to make sure that there isn't any movement, because there's times when I think I got a photo that looks good and then I realize that there is a little bit of movement, you can just change the blend mode to difference and it'll actually show you what, where if there's any movement. So you can actually see all these stars that are moving and the difference between each layer. Um, but you can see the foreground is near perfect. There's really no, no movement at all. Um, if, I was to move, if I was to move one of these, you'll see how much how visible it is the change. So um, this looks really good as far as just the the foreground itself. So now what I'll do is I'll just go back and change them back to normal and this part is actually fairly easy. So all you have to do is highlight the files that you want stacked, highlight them all and then right click and convert to a smart object. Now again this method, this step can take a long time uh, generally, if you do about 3 to 15 photos, you might be a couple minutes. Uh, if you do anything, up, I've done up to about 70 photos, and that could take upwards of an hour, depending on how good your computer is. So um, this is another method, or another point in time when you can take a break and, and go and relax. Okay, now that all the photos are stacked, you'll see one final layer here. So all we have to do now is we go up to Layer, Smart Objects, Dark Mode, and Median. Now what this is going to do is it's going to go through every single pixel in the image and it's going to take an average of each one. You're going to see that the sky is going to look really weird here in just a few minutes. What that is is because the stars move and they move so fast in those exposures that that star is not going to be in the exact same pixel over the, all those 20 images. So you're going to get a kind of a star trail, but kind of a no star trail. It's really weird. You'll see it here in a minute. But what it does when it gets to the foreground is the ground doesn't move and your building doesn't move. So it'll go through there and noise is completely random. So the noise will show up in, you know, one or two of those photos at maximum in that exact pixel. And then the next one, they're going to be in a different pixel. So what we're doing here is it's going to go through each pixel one by one and it's going to take an average of them. So if 15 photos have a building and then only five photos have noise, it's going to take the building and it's going to show that. So in essence, what it does is it completely gets rid of the noise. Again, the more photos you have, the more noise you or more detail you'll get back. So if you only have five, ten images, you, you have to be a little careful with how much you push that, how much you bring your shadows up. Um, I've stacked two images and got a lot back. So in this case, 20 images, the foreground's look going to look fairly clean. But you'll see here in just a moment when this is done stacking. Uh, this, meth this step does take a little bit of time as well. There's three steps that really take the most time. Um, but like there, you see it's finished. So. Um, the difference between the, the original photo and this is night and day. 
You can see that the sky is really messed up. There's no stars. It kind of looks like they're there, but it's just a bit of a glow. That's because, like I said, they're not in every single photo, so they're not in every single pixel. So as it goes through them, it's going to remove them. And in essence, they'll give you a crystal clear sky with no stars. Um, but we don't care about that. We're going to fix that later on. But what we do care about is the fact that this building is near perfect. You can see the windows inside the inside this building, what they were storing inside of it. Uh, you can see detail all around here. Compared to before, it was incredibly noisy. So it brings back life into this image. Now, the next step is putting your sky back because obviously we don't really want to leave it like this. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but we want to have a crystal clear sky, sharp stars, and a really good photo of Steve. So what we'll do is we'll overlay that on top of this and it'll be the easiest overlay you've ever done in Photoshop. So what I'm going to do is go back to Photoshop, find one of your photos that you really like. Now I'm going to go through and find the one that had the picket fence because there was a really good one there and see if I can find it. There, that one there. So in this one you can see the picket fence. I'm not worrying too much about the colors, the white balance. I can fix that later on in Photoshop with your final image, but in this case I just wanted to show you guys the stacking methods. So um, I'm going to bring those shadows back down. I'm going to bring the whites up, the blacks down, just a little more exposure. Bring down those highlights because I was pretty close to the noise or light pollution there. Uh, bring up that contrast a little bit, do a little bit of a tone skirt. Now again, I would spend a lot more time editing this image in Lightroom. You can also edit it, go right to Photoshop and edit it in Camera Raw if you want, but it just gets easier in here. I'm um, going to bring down that contrast a little bit more. And this is where we don't care. This is just your stars. Don't care about the building at all. And there we go, Let's. this will be the, the image that I choose. So uh, right click, edit this photo in Photoshop, and it should open it up in its own layer, or in its own uh, window completely. So now let me go check out Photoshop. <clears throat> we can do a little bit more adjustments here. Uh, you could do another tone curve, another S curve, anything like that, and then just flatten it when you're done. You can remove some noise. I like to sometimes remove some stars in this case, so I can run an action. Get rid of some of those stars to make the, uh, the photo look a little bit more sharp, just because more stars is often pretty bad in the, in the astro world. Removing a couple stars isn't the worst thing in the world. But in this case, what I'll do is I'll just take the, the image that we worked on in Lightroom. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the move tool, V if you're on a keyboard, and just simply move it over top of this layer. I'll line it up perfectly. And all we'll do is we'll make a, uh, a mask, a layer mask. Now, if you don't know about layer masks, we can go into that in a different video, but basically it's just a mask that will be able to mask out certain things. Uh, black means it uh, it'll show through, white means it doesn't show through. So in this case I want the sky to be white and I want the foreground to be black. And you can see that this is what it looks like right now if you were to just go off the layer mask itself. But if I go back to the layer mask and then I paint in the brush at 100% opacity and I paint back that foreground, Just like that, in 15 seconds, I have a crystal clear foreground and a perfect sky. Now, of course, you go in, you spend a little bit more time, you want to make sure that this is absolutely perfect. You can go in, you can do a bit of a blur on it if you don't like it. Um, so now that we're selected on the filter or on the layer mask itself, we can go in, we can do a Gaussian blur, and we can just blur it out a little bit more. Just if you're having some issues there, um, you can also, one thing I really like about this method is if I remove that layer mask and restart. If you don't like how bright it is, you can paint it back in with just a 60% a, you know, opacity 
and you can only, you only have to paint it in certain areas. So if you want the foreground to still be a little bit noisy or it's still a little too bright for you, there you go, paint it back in with just a little bit less opacity and then go back into your building and maybe bump that one back up to the 100% and paint back the building itself. Of course, because you're in Photoshop, you can go into this, this uh, the main photo and you can apply a camera raw filter and you can do some adjustments there. So if the, uh, if the white balance is a little bit off, you can fix that. I like a little more purples in mine. Warm wasn't actually that bad, but there we go. I want to do a little bit there. Now I, it'll fix it there, and then I can just go back and, and paint back in where, where I need to. So um, you can also go in, do some final adjustments now that you have your, your final images where you want it. Uh, darken the sky a little bit more, but you don't want to darken that foreground. So what you can do is you can just even bring up that... Uh, that mask and you can just paint it back in where you don't want those levels. Um, the opportunities are endless. There's so many things that you can do with this uh, with this style that I use. I like to use it on a lot of them. The reason for it is you can get so much detail in buildings that you didn't realize you have detail in. Uh, there's photos out there and of course if you can get a long exposure, if you can light up a building, it can work really well for a final photo but because I'm often I just forget about it or I get lazy there's a bit of a mixture of both sometimes you just don't get it and you forget and you move your camera and realize shoot now I have to go and do a full composite and, and blend two images together and it's just a whole lot of work so this method works really well that if you have a time lapse set up you can bring detail in it I have time lapses from Colorado where I did not like the final image. I didn't know what stacking was back when I was editing it. And now that I have, you know, 400, 500 photos, I can actually go back and I can bring back detail in a mountainous valley when really there, I shouldn't have been able to. There was never a long exposure to get that detail back. So um, really the sky's the limit with this. You can also use this method for stacking for your sky. Of course, there's better ones out there like Secretor, there's there's really good ones out there for stacking the sky and, and all that. Um, but this is the method I really like to use for stacking just the foreground and just being able to overlay that again. And again, the reason I like it is because it's so easy. There's no playing around of having to bring back the detail in certain areas. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with bringing back detail in trees or you know having to blend in around a tree. The nice thing about this is if I had a tree right here, I don't need to bring back the detail in that tree. I could leave it noisy and I could just bring back the detail in this. Uh, one of the photos I did just recently was uh, not too far from here, if I can find it. Um, it was the same idea. All I had to do was bring back the detail in the building and there was trees around it and I just left the trees because there, nothing moved it from first photo to final photo. Nothing moved at all. It was just simply the sky and uh, overlaid over top of that building. All right. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. Uh, this is one of my first tutorials I've done on YouTube, and I plan on doing a lot more. So if you have some questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd appreciate it if you like it, share it, subscribe to me. I have a lot of tutorials coming up. I have also a lot of videos of Aurora from you know southern Manitoba as well as a lot of trips planned now that uh, things are opening back up again. So lots of excitement coming in the future and I do plan on going through and, and showing you my editing techniques a little bit more in depth as well and just maybe speeding up the process a little bit. So uh, once again, thank you so much for paying attention and watching the whole video and I uh, hope to see you in the next one.